Okay, this is block seven, um, The Greatest Generation, section three, War Without the United States, with the section beginning, Hitler Attacks Western Europe. So let's quickly review. Um, the war starts when Hitler attacks uh, and destroys Poland. Um, so that becomes uh, blue. And the war kind of slowed down. You had the phony war, you had sixth grade. Hitler spends his time taking his forces and moving them west. The phony war ends with a bang in April of 1940 when Hitler conquers Denmark and Norway. He's conquered as well. And then on May 10th, 1940, Hitler sends his panzers, sends his divisions uh, in a blitzkrieg. And now, Ryan, if you could zoom in just to this part right here, I'm going to zoom in also. Um, zoom in. Got you, so cool. okay. In, on May the 10th, 1940, Hitler sends his army uh, against France and the British Expeditionary Force. And if you recall, France had kind of def uh, depended on what they called the Maginot Line. This line of defenses here on the Franco-German border. But what the Germans did is they simply went around those lines. And the German invasion came. Uh, incredibly powerfully through neutral Belgium. The Blitzkrieg works beautifully, and what it does is it takes the Franco-British army and cuts it in half, that the Germans drive to the sea, okay? And the line of the French defense, and the British defense, which had been here, was split in half, and here, along the coast of the English Channel, that the German forces got further in three weeks than they had in the four years of World War I, that the German forces reached the English Channel, and right across from Great Britain. And what happened was about half a million British and French troops were trapped with their backs against the sea, uh, with nowhere to go, with nowhere to retreat. Um, what happened next, and Britain's new prime minister, Winston Churchill, um, kind of prepared the British for this colossal military catastrophe that the entire of the entirety of the British expeditionary force was going to be destroyed there on the beaches of uh, the English Channel at a little tiny French town called Dunkirk. But then. Um, something happened that came down uh, in history as the miracle of Dunkirk. Now, if we have a look, zoom that back out, please. That you can tell from the picture, these are just British troops literally on the beach uh, in northern France at Dunkirk, um, waiting there. There was no one for them to maneuver. They had the English Channel behind them. Churchill orders the British Navy to see how many of the troops could be evacuated back to England. But it's not just the Navy that comes to the rescue. If you notice, there are no piers here. There's no harbor. There's nowhere for big ships to actually go and dock. And so what happens is Britain's maritime heritage comes to its rescue. And the little ships, as they came to be called, every vessel that could sail on the southern coast of England fishing boats, pleasure yachts, steamers, the old Thames paddle wheelers from the 1850s, everything that, that floated was taken by their own, the, the, the Navy didn't commandeer them, it was just the regular people who owned these boats, took these boats across the English Channel uh, to the beaches of Dunkirk and literally just began taking on 10, 15, 20, 50, 100, uh, British troops at a time. They got on these little ships. The little ships rowed out or drove out to the larger ships waiting in the channel where they offloaded the men and then they went and did it again. Uh, constantly ferrying back and forth on the beaches. Here are just some of the little ships. You would tell these are actual little ships. These are not naval vessels. Um, 
and uh, the channel was mined. There was torpedoes in it. There was bombers and fighters constantly fighting overhead. And these civilians in these little fishing boats and pleasure yachts, etc., etc., managed to get off 400,000 Allied troops, 250,000 Brits and 150,000 Frenchmen. The army, as Churchill said, got away. And this was the cream of the British army. This was the best troops that they had. And everyone was worried that they were all going to be taken, taken into captivity or killed, leaving the British pretty much defenseless. But the little ships of Dunkirk and the miracle of Dunkirk saved the army. Well, uh, it did not it saved the British army. It did not save the French. Back to our map. The British troops got away. Back to England. But the French line, as you can tell, had been broken. And now what Hitler did is he kind of ignored the British for a few weeks and took his army, turned it, and drove into France. The French army did a terrible job. Uh, the generals did not do a good job. <coughs> the individual soldiers did not tend to do a good job. That what Germany could not do in four years during World War I, uh, it managed to do in just six weeks uh, against France. That's six weeks after the Germans launched their attack into the, the, the Benelux countries, into the Netherlands and Belgium and Luxembourg. Six weeks after that, Paris fell and the French government agreed to surrender. And the Germans certainly rubbed salt in the wound that they had the French military surrender in the exact same railroad car that the Germans had surrendered in, in 1918. Um, and what the French agreed to was disband their army, hand over most of their territory. If we um, kind of look back at the map, one, there it is, that the French turned over um, most of their land to direct German control. that a French government was allowed to exist in the southern part of France. Uh, it was required to be a German ally. Uh, and in only six weeks, um, the French had surrendered. And all of a sudden, Britain is standing alone. And Hitler said, in six weeks, England will have her neck wrung like a chicken. 